How you doing? Mark here from Matterport. This is the third session talking about capture devices that Matterport uh, supports. The first was the Pro 2 device, which is, I think, the strongest tool overall. I think that the majority of use cases that a Matterport user will have, the Pro 2 can handle. The other one I covered after that in the second episode uh, was this 360 cameras and smartphone capture with a device that's non-LiDAR enabled. So just imaging, I think that that will span something like an iPhone 8 or somewhere around there up to the, uh, and including the new iPhone 12 that does not have the LiDAR enabled. So images only, and those images are converted to 3D based on years and years of capturing by devices like the Pro 2. So the next level, we went, to the mid-level here, the starting platform is the Pro 2. Useful, but uh, less fidelity. That the, the fidelity level is lower with the 360 cameras. And now we're going beyond the Pro 2 to the BLK 360 with LiDAR and including some information about the uh, Apple iPhone 12 Pro with LiDAR on board. So, what I'm showing here is um, a Pro 2 device next to a BLK360. So the size is different. This is a larger device, the, the Pro 2, and it's a different type of sensor. This is infrared structured light. This Pro 2 is not a laser. This Leica BLK360 is a LiDAR laser. This is a real laser device. So they have uh, provided, Leica provides uh, their own tripod. Uh, I choose to not use that tripod because of its, in my opinion, inferior quality. Uh, this device is $18,500. And I think that the tripod provided by the Leica the, the company is um, ill-suited for such a, an expense. This is the Manfrotto 190X. Um, there are two, to, two versions of tripods that I like. My top, top, top one is the 190X. It's more robust, has stronger cams on its legs. It's just a stronger device. The 290X is also a very good tool. Uh, and I'll, this is the last thing I'll say about the Leica uh, tripod. It's too low. You can't get it up high enough on the ground. It's got rickety uh, legs. Um, and this Pro 2 device is not able to be attached to the Leica tripod. Just get a man for the tripod, it's just easier for everybody. Uh, so um, what this device is now is this LiDAR is set up. This has similar setups. I'll move this closer to the, to the camera for us to get a better understanding. This is, uh, has images and it has measurements just like the Pro 2 but this has a different type of tool. So first, the imaging. It has, I think, one, two, three cameras on board, and these are like cell phone cameras. They're small. Um, this is not a strong imaging tool. Now I can change and up, up uh, take and, and bring in more HDR, the, the, the high definition uh, resolution of, of the imaging quality, you can take this, it's level from zero, totally off, to level five. Um, we recommend level three, which is the default position. Level five will give you a richer feedback of uh, imaging, but it takes longer time capturing. The next is this down the middle. This is the mirror optic that has the laser. You can kind of see just on this side, there's a small little lens. It shoots a laser, a very narrow beam, and then this optic, this mirror, will rotate very, 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 very quickly. And it will paint, uh, paint uh, in a figurative way. It will cover the laser beam over every surface in the room, 360, of course. This angle on the bottom will angle it down. So uh, what that means is you will miss certain data um, from the tripod underneath it. But this has a wider range compared to the Pro 2 device because this will go straight up. The Pro 2 device, it has two angles, 270 degrees up and down. 
but you can tell that those image sensors do not look up. So you are missing some data in the Pro 2 compared to this device, which does get the information above. But since this device, you move it just uh, uh, those few steps away, this will gather the data of the ceiling above the original position in another capture position. Five to eight feet away, 1.5 to 2.5 meters, uh, something like five paces, that's the Pro 2 capturing. This device is, gets farther distances. It's good for big outdoor spaces. What it's not really good at is inside buildings, is inside houses. Unless the operator really knows what they're doing, this device has what's known, well, all devices do, but in a laser, it's more pronounced. It has a focal length limitation, which pretty much means it's too close to something and it can't pick it up. So what you have to do is have the device further away from an object. So what if you're in a building and there's surfaces you wanna gather, but it won't pick it up because it's too close. Well, that's the problem with this device. And so it, it really is suited well for big spaces, outside uh, areas. Think about big open spaces indoors, like uh, conference rooms and big uh, halls for like, you know, where they have the auto show or something like that with a gigantic ceiling. Do you need to get the information all the way up there in the ceiling, that steel, the vents or the electric up there? Do you need to get that information? You do, you need to use this device. Now I can get up and get those measurements from this device, but I have to move the camera up closer to those surfaces. This is a longer run. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, press go on this so you get an idea of how long it takes. I'll keep up my conversation, but connected to that, connected to that. First rotation is uh, like, a, it's, it's getting a settings for the area. I think it might have to do with the white balance for the, the coloring uh, or other type of uh, um, alignment. Um, the first rotation it does is imaging only. So it's rotating and taking snapshots and you can see how it's moving around. It's actually going a lot faster and I think it's going around, I'm noticing this, it's going around faster because I changed the setting on it um, to speed up a lot more. So this is the lowest resolution and this, this might be helpful to understand for the group to see. Um, this will be done a lot faster. Um, I lowered the HDR off, low scan density, and these are options you can do. This is just blazing through. It's going to be done real quick. It's going to have, a, I think, a low quality scan. Um, this might take just, a, just about a minute or, or a minute and a half. Um, what essentially is happening is me as the user, I'm altering the way that this BLK360 captures in the field. I'm not able to do that with the Pro 2 or the 360 cameras. I'm only able to do it with this device here because of the range of its, uh, of its scope of how it works. So it's, it, the light on the top shows that it's in laser setting mode right now. And a person is able to walk around this device in the field. Uh, you don't have to run and hide. You can actually walk around it. And that was really quick. So uh, what I'm gonna do is this is gonna beam over here and I'm gonna change it to the same one again so we can get a general idea of the time. It's about four minutes, four minutes and 20 seconds for one rotation of the device. So we got some results here. I know from my experience that this is not going to be a satisfactory result. So I'm actually gonna delete this position. I can preview it ahead of time and I can get an idea of how it looked, but I know that this was not the setting that I meant to do. So I'm just gonna delete the scan right away, just like that. So. I'm gonna go into my settings here, options and the BLK360 is the, I'm gonna click the options. And then within this menu, you have an HDR. I'm bringing it up to level three. That's the setting that will come default in. I did some scanning before, which is why I had this change. And I'm changing it to medium density. High density, I do not think is worthwhile because the information of that high density will not be reflected in the overall model, but, just like those 360 cameras, the scan data from the BLK360, the raw data will still live on that device. 
There's nothing that's stored on the Pro 2 over a long period of time. And it has no onboard memory in that way. The BLK360, the 360 cameras, those store images or scan data on board. So I'm gonna run this one more time. The first rotation is the, um, the calibration rotation. Let's put it like that. I'm gonna start this time. Um, it is just about four and a half minutes. It's not, not very long. It has improved from previous uh, uh, iterations. And so long time users will be able to comment uh, of the uh, speed that has improved dramatically. It used to be upwards of eight minutes for one capture rotation of this device. Now it's down to four. That includes transfer time and alignment time. So in review right now, it's doing the small motions. It's snapping a picture using all three cameras, doing a move, all three cameras, doing a move. This rotation is just snapshots. And then after its full rotation, it will do uh, the laser portion. One of the negative things about how it separates images and laser section of its capturing is that stuff can move. So if you wanna have the appropriate coloration, the texture of the stuff you're capturing, if something's moving, the coloration is not gonna match with that three-dimensional surface. It's just not. So you'll have weird color streaks or if a person was there in the snapshot and then later on were not there during the section of the 3D data gathering, it'll have their face spread on the wall, like, like literally. So why I'm giving these, these stories, one, this takes a long time and I can share these stories with you. But the other thing is, to consider that this isn't used for a lot of the good, um, like home sales, walking through a building, like uh, like to rent a home for like vacation rentals. The, this is not the device for that purpose at all. So if people already own this in their architecture office in whatever outfit they work and if they own this, great. We can figure out a way to use this for their uses. Um, but I think that this is a great tool to use in tandem with a Pro 2 ownership. I think the Pro 2 is the first tool a person should purchase from Matterport. And then in time, 360 units are okay. Um, but I really think that the dollar amount invested, like this unit here, this is $1,000. And this Rico Theta Z1, Z1, it's a fine tool. It really is a nice tool. It's got all kinds of different lenses. It's, it processes on there. It's a strong tool. But in the last video I showed, I, I dropped it. So as we're waiting for this thing to go, um, as it rotates, you'll see it move around and the, the mirror optic is, is buzzing. You can check it out as it rotates. Um, maybe the laser beam will go in the lens. It, it's not a high enough laser where it's gonna hurt your eyes. So don't worry about that. Um, a person operating in the field, but this device, thousand dollars. Is it useful anymore? I gotta get it fixed from somebody, I don't know who, but you can imagine your customer or the, the operator, the user, thousand dollars essentially down the drain. So thinking about invested dollars, don't think about it as let's say this device is better and, and the competition against it. Think about it as the dollars or the pounds or the euros uh, or the yen, all invested. How much are you putting into your uh, business. And I think that dollars invested, money invested in Matterport, I think is very well suited for investing in things like uh, capture devices like an iPad Pro, iPhone 12 Pro with LiDAR, um, and a Pro 2 device. I, I really think so. So um, with that said, just in time, it's making that noise. It's beaming the information over to the iPad. And here we are, second position. So I'm just about, uh, just under four, uh, sorry, just under five minutes, maybe five and a half minutes, four and a half minutes, sorry. Um, in summary, I'm gonna leave it like this. Um, this LiDAR laser is able to gather very, very good, strong information in larger spaces. 
that it's not able to gather information in close proximity. It doesn't have as good an imaging quality as a Pro 2. It isn't as fast as some of these 360 cameras. It really is a specialized user. So I wouldn't recommend this tool unless the person is demonstrating the need to have a specific output and one that fits the suited needs of the BLK360. And if you can see on this, uh, the, the image itself, it's for a user who's untrained, you may not see much, but the idea is this darker area, these occlusions, this is data missed. There's no information from on top of the table or beside it, it's too close. Now, if I go back to previous episodes that we did, that same tabletop, I'm gathering information very close to that original unit, better than that previous three, uh, uh, BLK360. So I'm gathering closer information in proximity to the original capture device. And then going back to the Pro 2, it's a similar type of an output as the 360 cameras. I can see this tabletop. I can make out the items that I knew are on there. So the Pro 2, the 360 cameras are able to gather more data closer in proximity, indoors, things like that. Outdoors, big spaces, the BLK360 is great. The 360 cameras can also work outside. Um, but the last part I want to mention about LiDAR, and I'm actually going to do a, a, a whole separate episode on the LiDAR for the iPhone 12 Pro because it, it really is unique. Uh, but that LiDAR on the iPhone 12 Pro is a very, very, very similar type of tool to this. So the idea that you're able to get, in some ways, a, a reduced power output, but a similar technology, laser, but in a handheld handset. So taking away $18,500, taking away other expenses like a $1,000 Rico Theta Z1, and you're able to get a lot of the benefits of these two devices out of that iPhone 12 Pro LiDAR. So um, it's a different type of output, a different fidelity, but for a lot of users, I think it's gonna be just what they need. So uh, I hope this was helpful about the BLK360. Um, Overall summary, it's a good tool. It's a lot of money to invest in it. You could buy five Pro 2s for $15,000 US, probably less with a deal, and you're still going to be uh, thousands of dollars less than one of these units. So um, that's where I'd go. So hopefully this has been helpful, and I'll talk to you in the next episode.